Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing to adhere to established protocols and guidelines to the coronavirus. 150 St. Lucians explore higher learning opportunities in the Republic of China, Taiwan. The National Conservation Authority to address a growing threat to the Pigeon Island National Landmark. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Al Creole. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing to adhere to established protocols and guidelines in ensuring the protection of the health and safety of the nation in the wake of the novel coronavirus, now referred to as COVID-19 by the World Health Organization. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar-George has informed that a non-national who arrived here on Tuesday 11th February remains quarantined. In keeping with national response protocols, the individual has been placed on medical quarantine at a public health facility and the necessary assessments are being undertaken. One of the gaps in the coronavirus management indicated by the ministry last week was diagnostic testing. However, as of Friday, February 7, 2020, the Caribbean Public Health Agency in Trinidad has indicated that they have developed the capacity to facilitate regional testing. Coffer's Medical Microbiology Lab is accepting specimens for diagnostic testing by molecular method. The turnaround time is between 28 to 48 hours from receipt of the specimens at their lab. Coronaviruses, the illnesses range from the common cold to more severe diseases such as the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The signs include respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and difficulty breathing. In severe cases of the disease, pneumonia may develop or severe respiratory syndrome, which can lead to death. The government of St. Lucia has implemented a multidisciplinary approach to the national response to the coronavirus, General Norville explains. National epidemiologist Dr. Michelle Fossois explained that St. Lucia has since strengthened its surveillance. Currently, we are relying on our weekly um, surveillance. We do syndromic surveillance in St. Lucia where we report cases of flu-like symptoms. We rely on that, but we also strengthen in our surveillance to detect um, any case of influenza, sorry, of coronavirus. Um, we do have a case definition circulating, which has been circulated to um, physicians and healthcare professionals, so that in addition to persons presenting with signs and symptoms, they also have, um, they also ask a history of where that individual has been or whether they have been in contact with somebody who has traveled outside of St. Lucia and more than likely in, um, in China. Um, Persons who we have not had any confirmed cases in St. Lucia, we have not had any cases in the region as yet. However, we do have measures in place for individuals. So if we do get a suspected case, we have identified an isolation facility where that person will be managed. There are nurses stationed at the airports who are responsible for conducting surveillance of incoming passengers. Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Agnanan indicated that the travel history of individuals coming into the ports is very important in the department's detection of the virus. We are collaborating with our other partners at the border, including Customs and, and Immigration, to be able to share information and uh, be able to... Uh, determine whether there is somebody that is coming, especially now, out of China. And once we have had that information, the travel history, uh, that passenger is actually taken off the general flow of clearance and is taken into a holding room where they are monitored, the vital signs are done, and they are questioned and information is taken. And uh, a determination is made whether that person uh, is presenting any signs of symptoms of the flu. If that is made, then a decision would be made in terms of uh, um, quarantine that person at a medical institution. If the person does not show any signs of symptom, the decision at this point in time is to do home quarantine for that individual. 
The Department of Health and Wellness has noted the escalation in the classification of the outbreak and is taking measures to restrict the possible entry of coronavirus disease into St. Lucia and protect its citizens. In that regard, the government of St. Lucia will not allow any non-national with a travel history within the last 14 days from mainland China, whether in transit or originating, to enter any local port as of 12 a.m. on Tuesday, February 4, 2020. Any national returning to St. Lucia with similar travel history will be quarantined for 14 days. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gil Rigobert, has reiterated the government's commitment to improving the education sector. The minister spoke at the National Principals Association's annual education conference. More from Anissa Antoine. The National Principals Association officially hosted the 36th annual education conference. The conference being held under the theme, Educational Leadership, Achieving Success Through Self-Reflection, Relationship Building and Conducive Learning Environments, affords principals an opportunity to hone their professional development and management skills. Valerie St. Helen Henry is the president of the National Principals Association. This conference presents an opportunity for us to reflect and celebrate how far we have come while also looking ahead to where we intend to go and how we can get there utilizing best practices. Your presence at the annual conferences and participation in our discussions strongly indicates that you respect our profession and you want to work with NPA St. Lucia to achieve its goals. St. Helen Henry expressed gratitude to the principals for the effort being put into their work daily. What is remarkable about each one of you is that your core motivation is always to do the absolute best you can for each of these students in your care while providing support for the teachers you lead and support. Principals belong to an extraordinary group of workers, and we have to recognize this of ourselves. We are a group of workers who often take a mere two fish of funds and five loaves of educational supplies, yet feed the minds of thousands. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, during her address at the conference, reaffirmed her commitment to improving the education system in St. Lucia. Colleagues, I encourage you to engage in continuous self-discovery and self-reflection, to consistently undertake environmental scanning and work at cultivating strong but healthy relationships. The National Principals Conference took place at Sandals Halcyon on Thursday, February 6, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. 150 St. Lucians seeking higher education have been briefed on the opportunities available in the Republic of China, Taiwan. Each year, the Taiwanese government hands out dozens of scholarships to St. Lucians to undertake studies in various fields. General Norville reports. A journey of 1,000 miles begins with a single step. That's according to charge d'affaires for the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Councillor Bill Wang, who offered words of encouragement to potential applicants for the 2020 Taiwan Scholarship. The councillor indicated that St. Lucians have been excelling in Taiwan, not just in academics but in areas such as creative industries and the culinary arts. He encouraged the applicants to take full advantage of all the opportunities afforded to them. Your predecessors have set really high bars for you to emulate. So I think uh, when you are there, you need to work harder, not only study harder but explore all, all sorts of opportunity that Taiwan can offer. And I have to say there is really no need to rush. The briefing today is just a start. And it's a very good opportunity for you to understand the rules 
the procedures, the obligations and requirements to apply for the scholarship. Last year, we have very qualified students uh, who, you know, who did not get awarded because, you know, there were some documents missing in the file. And it's really a shame. I don't want that to happen to you. So I hope that you listen very carefully as to what uh, my colleague Stephen here and, you know, all your predecessors have to say and pay attention to the details. The programs include the 2020 Move for Taiwan Scholarship, ICDF Scholarship, and ISU Medical Scholarship programs. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Education, Innovation, and Gender Relations, Michelle Charles, expressed gratitude to the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for its continued support. We may be local, but we need to think global. As a result, it is necessary to identify the opportunities which continuously emerge and moreover to be prepared to capitalize on them. Today is one such opportunity, students, prospective students, and this opportunity is being presented to you. It's one that seeks to narrow the skills gap by leveraging our, our relationship with the Republic of China, Taiwan, with a view to enhancing our human capacity. Therefore, it is indeed a pleasure that I, on behalf of the Minister of Education and the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, extend my deepest appreciation to the government and people of Taiwan as they continue to support St. Lucia through the provision of academic scholarships. The application period for the 2020 scholarship program is open from the 13th of January to 15th of March 2020. The scholarship programs provide opportunities for young talented St. Lucians to study in Taiwan for bachelor, master or PhD degrees. The awardees list will be posted on the embassy's website on the 30th of June 2020. All application documents should be delivered to the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Redway Beach Avenue, Rodney Bay, Grosley, by the deadline 15th of March 2020. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. We'll be back in a moment. The Ministry of Tourism is working alongside the Department of Statistics to develop St. Lucia's Tourism Satellite Account, TSA. The Tourism Satellite Account is an internationally established method of measuring the direct contributions of tourism to our national economy. This will help the government in developing effective policy for the industry. If you are in the business of tourism, the Ministry needs your help in collecting critical data necessary for this tourism satellite account. Let's all help to develop and improve our economy. All tourism-related establishments are asked to contact the Ministry at 468-5393 before Friday the 28th of February for further information specific to their business. Welcome back. The National Conservation Authority, the NCA, is concerned about a growing trend at the Pigeon Island National Landmark, the illegal dumping of construction and household waste. On Wednesday, 12 February, we accompanied officials on a site visit. When you think of the Pigeon Island area, you think of St. Lucia's National Landmark, conservation and beauty. But instead, when we entered here on the Pigeon Island Causeway, what we found was garbage, lots and lots of garbage. Now, this is nothing new to St. Lucia, but the authorities are saying that this practice has to stop. The National Conservation Authority, the St. Lucia Solid Waste Management Authority, the St. Lucia National Trust, the Landings and Sandals Grand are all in agreement that the practice is detrimental to the St. Lucian tourism product, the environment and the health of the country. General Manager of the National Conservation Authority, Jacinta Lee, expressed her displeasure with the practice as not too long ago, the authority made a plea to residents about the disposal of waste on the island's beaches. Let me tell you that you could see in, uh, to the back, you could see some of the garbage, but all around the area is just garbage. And how could somebody do that? I'm really, really sad about this. Now, let me just say that we have gone through the garbage and we've been able to pick up um, some names, names of companies, and these companies will be um, contacted. 
derelict containers, bulky waste, green waste, and construction and demolition material all form part of the refuse being dumped at a private lot near the Pigeon Island Causeway. While the Solid Waste Management Authority does not have jurisdiction over private property, the organization is appealing to those practicing the illegal act to dispose of their waste at the official site, the Deglu Sanitary Landfill. There is a fine when the culprits are caught of $5,000 to clean. They have two choices, either to clean the area or pay the fine. So today, I am asking that generators, they know who they are, stop the illegal dumping of waste, take it to the sanitary landfill, it's free of charge. We have the Pigeon Island National, National Landmark straight ahead, the landings, the sandals resort. And when people are driving up here to see that this is the very first thing that they see here, this angers all staff members of the St. Richard National Trust and members alike. Um, it is really embarrassing that we have to have this in front of such beauty. Parliamentary representative for Grosley, Honorable Leonard Montoot, says this particular site is not the only one in his constituency where waste is being disposed of illegally. He cautioned residents to do the right thing, not just for the environment, but for their health. If you have a problem with the disposal of bulk waste, there are days when your garbage, as part of garbage collection, bulk waste is picked up. If you have a problem and you, you, you don't have access to, to that service, then speak to solid waste, speak to environmental health department and you will get assistance. This is a practice I'm hoping that people will desist from engaging in and I'm hoping that the perpetrators you know, will understand that they are doing a disservice to, to this country, the people of the country. What I think ought to be done, especially in the areas that we know that are regularly um, used for, for indiscriminate dumping, we, I think cameras should be set in those areas so that the perpetrators could be caught and penalized for that practice. Because at times an ap appeal to the good judgment and good senses of individuals does not work and sometimes penal measures is what is required. The stakeholders plan to hold a cleanup for the area on February 29, 2020. And do stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next is Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. St. Lucia! Are, are, are you ready for the National Independence Parade? Celebrate our independence in a grand way this February 22nd, starting at the Sab in VG. Come experience a true St. Lucian spectacle with amazing floats, traditional dancers, musicians, and more. Led by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and include communities, ministries, and business houses. Join in the excitement and let Show the best of St. Lucia. Now is the time. Let's do this together. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame Department, qui est responsabilité pour l'information. Gouvernement cette ci GIS, Assemblée Pi Télévision Nationale Pays à NTN, Capozito Nouvelle Arqueo. Capozito. Primus Hutchinson. Le péché, la ville a choisi, à quoi encore, qu'aspirer bonne volonté du gouvernement Japon, agence de coopération internationale des pays Japon, Jawan le péché choisi sous coup une assistance pour pour la pêche au assez pour toi à la radio même. Depuis tant que gouvernement Japon bâtit faciliter la pêche choisi, parce que vingt ans après ça, le péché a continué à aspirer ses difficultés pour conduire bateau pour entrer en port en résultat ces quantités sans qui a continué à combler là et qu'à quoi gouvernement japon a aidé les pêcheurs choisis trouver une solution pour problème ça là qui a continué à chagriner en l'eau alors japon japon fait une présentation pour ces pêcheurs ça là et aussi société coopérative la pêche en ville choisie ministre de des affaires agricoles et Cooperative, on va Ezekiel Joseph te présent à Conférence Sala et profiter de la chasse là pour établir l'importance de la pêche là pour la commune choisie. 
C'est là où le ministre Joseph, quand le gouvernement est coopératif, et aussi quand le cultivateur a fait un pharma, et possiblement les représentants du Parlement, yo quand le gouvernement a essayé plusieurs solutions, mais pièce par travail. Le ministre Agricole a fait comprendre que il y a un ensemble où est en cette façon que situation ça l'a affecté choisi. Alors le gouvernement s'est aussi engagé, le gouvernement japonais. Et que vous êtes bien satisfait que le Japon soit d'accord pour vous considérer la position pour participer à l'effort pour trouver une solution pour ce problème-là qui a affecté les pêcheurs à choisir. Le ministre Agricole, qui est aussi responsable pour le secteur de la pêche, a déclaré que ces diverses démarches pour trouver une solution en temps avant ont coûté un lot d'argent et que ce n'est pas un qui est sustainable. C'est pour ça que le gouvernement s'est aussi engagé le gouvernement Japon. M. Joseph a annoncé qu'il a été conduit un groupe pour le pays Japon et puis deux représentatifs hors coopératif les pêcheurs choisis pour être expérimentés pour eux-mêmes ces recommandations qui sont ici s'adapter pour trouver une solution. Le représentatif du Parlement pour choisir ex-Altimis, honorable Bradley Félix, dit que le problème n'est pas seulement financier, mais aussi qu'il y a un grand problème de l'environnement pour les autres. Il dit. Il est très apprécié l'assistance du Japon. On a Félix de Kayoki. Il faut nous changer ces qualités, ces assistances-là que le pays a été trouvé en tant que passer hors de gouvernement étranger et l'autre agence. Il est très payé pour cette M. Félix dit aussi que le gouvernement du Japon a demandé que l'argent qui a dépensé à ce pays à présent, il voulait que le monde de l'agence soit servi pour faire ce qui est un bon service. Le représentatif choisi a dit qu'il a apprécié l'assistance du gouvernement Japon pour des grandes assistances, ça pour courager le problème pêche à choisir. Le ministère de l'Agriculture, bienvenue au groupe Les étudiants de l'Institut agricole de pays Guadeloupe. La raison pour la visitation, c'était pour ces étudiants pour venir au courant et puis trouver un exposé pour le système de cultivation. Avec l'opération agricole en cette ci et ses différentes façons et techniques qui en service. Chef consulte pour la commune Babono, Paul Edgar, parler de ses qualités et activités qui s'est étudiées à participer à Bamiyo. C'était une visitation, une visitation figue en Ozo, et établissement agricole à Union. Edgar déclare qu'il a tenu une excursion au Léon cette ci pour être expérimenté pays à l'aide. Edgar remarque qu'il s'est étudié à visiter l'habitation où il y a un cultivateur. Les gens qui ont produit manger pour les animaux, en fait fort, ils ont aussi visité les femmes en commune OG avec les cultivateurs Simos. Monsieur l'Institut qui a conduit le groupe là, c'est ce groupe des étudiants agricoles, Guadeloupe, dit qu'il est très appréciable pour le gouvernement, c'est aussi pour l'occasion qui fait possible pour ces étudiants apprendre le système agricole pays. Le ministre des Agricoles, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, dit qu'il y a espoir qui est chance à la caille continue entre cette ici et puis Guadeloupe. Il fait référence pour yon en sa yon apon, hot Guadeloupe, pour la pêche, ça c'est, ça fait pour mon yon pour tchébe pression. Le fad là c'est un, un, un instrument pour qu'on mette yon la mer pour attraper pression. Mm -hmm. Right, so, c'est là nous pêche nous allons dehors, yon um, yo pas qu'à aller tout pas, yon allons bon fad là yon allons pêcher. Et puis, dès ce dimanche, nous avons une opportunité pour um, adresse. Um, the Cassius Fisherman's Cooperative. If you learn of the, if you learn of the record la, that um, Luca, Luca Juan, they vini pou la pêche o on fad la, it can really much encourage you to continue fez a fez fad sa. Program la, ki komanse samedi li 18 janvier, te bout li 27 janvier 2020. Bon, komo te pou metou, jodia nou ka pose atasyon nou asou, Statement Premier Ministre Honorable Alan Chasney concernant le plan gouvernement pour faciliter le sport en pays. Premier Ministre Chasney déclare qu'il dit un adresse pour l'année 2020 quand le gouvernement a dépensé 10 millions de dollars pour bâtir et aussi pour improuver à ce les autres faciliter le sport. Selon le Premier Ministre, là, c'est le Premier Ministre Chasney, la raison c'était simplement pour présenter l'occasion pour la jeunesse pays fait progrès et développer bon conduite et caractère. Le Premier ministre a noté qu'il considère ça, c'est les jeunes qui ont accompli en sport, en degré international, c'est preuve de capabilité 
Il est né pour faire encore plus. Le premier ministre Chassene servi, par exemple, Darren Summy avec Levin Spencer, Albert Reynolds avec récemment Julian Alfred, qui a accompli et qui a continué à montrer la capacité pour faire plus toujours. Le premier ministre l'a mentionné aussi Chris Boucher et Clarence Mann, qui présentement a joué et puis NBA en cricket. Captain Kimani Melius, qui a conduit Tim West Indies, qui a bas l'âge 19 ans, qui jouait en Sud-Afrique, et aussi la victoire, c'est le site trouvé à Gros Spectax pour l'île du vent l'année passée. Le Premier ministre là, a encouragé cette ci en résultat ce succès qui se jeunesse cette ci a déjà accompli. C'est faux ou promettez, eh bien, nous promettez ce sport derrière groupe sport, Gros Sport Olympics 2020. Le Premier ministre là, a parlé de travail qu'il a fait pour improuver, faciliter le sport et puis lumière à la fac choisie, pour aussi improuver le ministère en souffrir, Ruby Cricket Ground, Grounds Bowl en balata et pour football à des ruisseaux et préparation, pour commencer le travail pour improuver Grounds Bowl à Mikou et Cricket à Denry, aussi National Sports Academy à Gozile, côté plus que ces quatre étudiants qui ont commencé l'étude parmi plusieurs autres projets de sport. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle journée. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder, pour vous avoir une invitation. Je ne peux pas encore se dire, concernant la vie, mais pour ce temps, notre nouvelle à quoi il y a pour ça. Je vous remercie pour ce temps, Michel. Merci, Bill Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy, hazy, and breezy, becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers. The Atlantic High Pressure System will continue to generate moderate to brisk easterly winds and rough seas around the Eastern Caribbean region for the next couple of days. An area of Sahara dust haze currently over the Eastern Caribbean region will continue to cause a reduction in visibility over that region for the next couple of days. Weak, unstable conditions in the atmosphere over the Lesser Antilles will cause some scattered showers to develop over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 6.25 p.m. and will be low again at 12.19 a.m. The tides for Vieux Fort Bay was low at 1.20 p.m. and will be high again at 7.32 p.m. The seas locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells 6 to 9 feet or 1.8 to 2.7 meters. Small craft operators and sea bavers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Thursday at 6.28 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.